let's consider this claim if cat then mammal. It's shorthand for if something is a cat, then the thing must be a mammal. So let's say this claim is true, right? It's true. And I tell you Mittens is a cat, right? Mittens is a cat. Then hopefully you'll say, well, great, then she's a mammal. That's just the straightforward reading of this claim if something is a cat, it's a mammal. Now, what if I tell you Mittens is not a mammal? Then hopefully you'll tell me that she's not a cat because that's true. According to this claim, that is true. See, this claim is representing, it's just, you know, this is an English, right? But like pictorially, we're just talking about the relationship between sets. There's a bigger set called mammal and there's a smaller set called cat. The first version of this, I said, hey, you know what? Mittens is a cat, which means I picked out this member in this set called cats. And what you said back to me is that, well, then if she's a member in this smaller set and the smaller set being subsumed under the bigger set, then she must also be a member of the bigger set, which you can just clearly see she is, right? She is not only a member of the cat set, she is also a member of the mammal set. That was the first version, mittens is a cat. I don't know if you've ever thought about cats and mammals in exactly such terms, but it is one way to think about the relationship. The second version of what I told you was that mittens is not a mammal. Right? How do you pictorially represent that? Mittens on a mammal. Well, that means mittens not being a mammal. She can't be in here, right? Because being in here, that would, that means she's a mammal, right? You can see she's within the set of things we call mammals, but then she's outside of things we call we call cats. So maybe mittens is a dog in this example, right? Or or mittens is a dolphin in, in this example. But that's not what I said. I said mittens is not a mammal, which means she's over here, right? If she's over here, of course she's not a cat. She's outside the superset. How can she be a part of the subset? Do you see how far she is from the cat uh, set, right? So she can't be a cat. Fine. Those are logically valid moves. I tell you she's a cat. You tell me she's a mammal. I tell you she's not a mammal. You tell me she's not a cat. Both are logically valid moves. Here's the trap. What if I tell you Mittens is a mammal? All I've said there is that somewhere in the superset, you're going to find Mittens, right? Somewhere in the superset because she's a mammal. So she's somewhere in here. I hope you resist the urge to immediately reflexively say, oh, she must be a cat, because that's not true. She could be a cat, surely cat is a subset of mammals, or she could be a dolphin, or she could be a dog, or she could be a bear, all of which are subsets of mammals, and all I've said is mittens is a mammal. That's a trap that the LSAT writers will lay in front of you time and time again, repeatedly even within the same question sometimes. They'll lay out the very same trap more than once because they know it's an effective trap. They know a guaranteed number of students will fall for it. Here's a slightly different, but at its core, same trap. This time, I'm going to tell you Mittens is not a cat, right? Mittens not a cat, which means you just, you, you have to exclude her from this subset. Hopefully, once again, you will resist the urge to speak to her mammalness, okay? And by that, I mean, Hopefully you won't tell me, oh, well, then she must be a mammal or she must not be a mammal because I just don't know. All we said was Mittens is not a cat. She's outside of this subset. Where is she? Is she in this larger set or is she outside this larger set? Both are possible. The fact that she's not a cat doesn't tell me whether she is a mammal or not. Okay, so those are two of the most common traps that the outside writers will employ. And that's the trap that I like to call, sometimes I call it the oldest mistake in the book. Sometimes I call it the sufficiency necessity confusion, right? It's, it's all referencing this. Okay, so I'll show you one other way to understand this confusion. Okay, one other way to understand this confusion. And it's by appeal to logic. Now in logic, as we saw in the earlier unless lesson, you take the claim in English, you translate it into this formal language of logic where you use an arrow and the thing in front of the arrow is a sufficient condition, the thing after the arrow is a necessary condition. With if then, it's pretty straightforward, right? Just everything kind of just drops into place. Other formulations, as we'll see, you know, you have to do, go through a bit of translation like we did with unless. But anyway, here I want to use this language and talk about the trap. See, the way to remember not falling for the trap is just to follow the arrow. Okay, just to follow the arrow. If something is positively a cat, then you can say it's a mammal. But if I tell you something is a mammal, then you have to ask yourself, wait, okay, if something is a mammal, then presumably there's an arrow going this way, but then on this side of the arrow, I have nothing. I have thin air. So if you just tell me something is a mammal, I don't know what to do with that. I'm not going to go back against the arrow and point to cat, right? That's j I'm just not going to do that. Do you see, that took care of that first error I, when I said mittens is a mammal, and that just means she's somewhere over here, somewhere in this space. 
must she be in the cat subset or maybe she's a bear or maybe she's a dolphin do you see what i mean like you don't know so remember just to follow the arrow okay what about the situation where i said some uh, mittens wasn't a cat where's that see to get that you first have to manipulate this claim. You have to manipulate this claim to arrive at a logically equivalent claim. And that's called a contrapositive. And again, I'll just say the formal way of doing it. The formal way of doing it is you keep the arrow exactly the same, right? You keep the arrow exactly the same. You swap the position of the sufficient and necessary condition for each other. Okay, so mammal goes over here, right? It used to be necessary, now it's sufficient. Cat goes over here, it used to be sufficient, now it's necessary. And the one last step is you slap negations onto both of them. Okay, you slap negation onto both of them. Now, the equivalent move over here would be if not mammal, then not cat. So fully spelled out grammatically correct English would be if something is not a mammal, then the thing cannot be a cat. Right, same thing. Just swap out the conditions, swap the conditions for each other, add the negations. And there you have it. These two are logically equivalent. These two are logically equivalent. All four statements are logically equivalent. They're the same statement. All of them, all four of them are just describing this picture. That's it. Right, the picture is the, I mean, at some point I can't, like, it's, it's an idea, really, right? It, it's, it's this idea between the relationship of two sets. That's what we're ultimately getting to, right? But, you know, we, we have to, the idea has to have representation somehow. I can use words to, you know, try to represent it. I can use pictures to try to represent it. I can use English to try to represent it. I can use a formal logic language to try to represent it. At the end of the day, it's just an idea. And you have to, to be able to talk about the idea, you have to represent it somehow. The crucial point is that it's the same idea, right? These are just different representations of the same idea. So now with the contrapositive, with this additional weapon in your arsenal, now you can see it's the same thing. When I told you that Mittens is not a mammal, right? Mittens is not a mammal. That means she's over here somewhere. I said a logically valid move is you can conclude that she's not a cat because follow the arrow, it points to not a cat. And you know, pictorially, if she's a mammal, she's not a mammal, she's over here, then clearly she's not a cat. She's so far outside the cat set, right? And now here comes the trap. What if Mittens is not a cat? See, that was when I said, what if Mittens isn't in this subset? Where is she? And I said, I hope you resisted the urge to speak to her mammalness because you just don't know. If she's not a cat, maybe she's here, maybe she's here. Both of these are outside the cat set. See, you just don't know. Now, once again, if I tell you she's not a cat, you can say to yourself, okay, she's not a cat. Presumably, there er this arrow is over to somewhere, but where? I don't know. It's just thin air. I don't know. Do you see? You just don't want to go against the arrow. It's, it's the same thing over here. If I tell you she's a mammal, you just look over here. It's like, I have no idea what that means. If I tell you she's not a cat, you look over here. I, I don't know what that means. But hey, but if she is a cat, then I know what that means. Then she's a mammal. Oh, hey, if she isn't a mammal, I know what that means. That means she's not a cat. Okay, so remember, two things here contrapositive and never never push back against the arrow and never push where there is no arrow if you remember all that you'll avoid the oldest mistake in the book sufficiency necessity confusion contrapositive mistake